Yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate you, you spending an hour with us to learn about DocuSign and CivStart and the, the partnership between the two, um, our two organizations. Um, I am Jessica Passione, the Director of Community and Education at CivStart, and I am so honored and glad to be joined by Fickison Belogan, who is the Senior Partner Alliance Manager at DocuSign. Um, he's been with that organization uh, for, for nearly five years, but is truly um, an expert in the space as he's been managing SAS partnerships for nearly a decade. And we're really excited to have you, Fickinson. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, Jessica. I appreciate it. And thank you all for joining. We really appreciate that. Well, today we're gonna to learn about how DocuSign engages with the public sector and ways in which startups specifically can integrate DocuSign's solution to create more seamless experience for their customers, their government customers, excuse me. Um, so I'd really like to start uh, by talking with you, Fickison, about the partnership between um, between our, our entities. Can you explain the nature of our partnership um, between Sibstart and DocuSign and how really the collaboration came about and what the primary goals are, um, you know, that we aim to achieve together? Yeah, no problem. Thanks again, Jessica. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining. Sure. Um, we're really excited about the partnership with Sibstart. Um, DocuSign has been a partner of Sibstart now for a few years. Um, and, and and honestly, we have a great relationship with the uh, all of the U.S. Uh, all all fifty of the U.S. states. So we are trusted within every one of the U.S. fifty states, and we have a great relationship with Sivstart. And we think this is a great opportunity for us to explore the synergy there, and 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 really introduce the innovative solutions that Sivstart um, members are are bringing towards uh, or bringing to digital transformation throughout the public sector. Um, so we love to get these 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 two folks together. Absolutely. Well, like I mentioned um, just a minute ago, we really want to uh, kind of teach everyone uh, here today attending how DocuSign interacts with the government agencies. And so can you speak to the key features of DocuSign's e-signature tool, uh, specifically how it's tailored to public the public sector and how those features really address some of the common challenges that um, are faced by those public agencies? Yeah, no problem. So in the federal space, DocuSign's e-signature solution as well as our CLM solution are both FedRAMP moderate authorized and we achieved DOD IL-4 authorization. And then as recently as 2023, these same products achieved state ramp authorization as well. And then just for context, state ramp provides a common standard for state and local governments to validate that their customers are uh, utilizing the appropriate security and data controls in place. Um, in addition to that, just to provide some additional context on DocuSign, um, we're one of the foremost trusted solutions in the market. Um, really hope that you guys uh, know about our brand. Um, we've been in existence now for a little over 20 years. We have a million customers, over 1 billion users, and we're in over 180 countries. That's incredible. Every time I hear those numbers, it's like staggering. <laughs> it's yeah. just amazing. Um, so, but could you speak a little bit um, to uh, or if you could discuss how DocuSign solution really helps public send, uh, public sector agencies reduce their manual tasks and printed forms. Um, and truly, you know, this is why a lot of folks get into GovTech is because we're all worried, passionate about sustainability. So could you also speak to how um, the, the implementation of DocuSign, how, uh, what observed impact you've seen on operation efficiencies, obviously, but also environmental sustainability? Yeah, no problem. Happy to. So um, statistics show that across the government, at least 75% of business processes are initiated by some sort of form. And so one way to think about that is um, if you're enrolling for benefits, if you are requesting time off to HR, or if you're applying for a job, there's some sort of form that's initiated to kick off that process. Um, and we know that there's going to be potentially an opportunity for us to digitize that business process. Uh, one way I kind of like to look at this, and you know, it's, it's kind of the way I like to visualize um, the way we could potentially come to agreement is what I call the bow tie method. So if you think of a bow tie, the center of that bow tie, there's going to be an agreement or a signature that takes place. Mm -hmm. And then on either side of that bow tie, there's going to be funnels. Um, on the left side of that funnel, we may be ingesting some sort of data, um, we may be doing some sort of authentication. So if you're coming with a state issued ID, we might verify that, authenticate it, and, and make sure that you are you are who you say you are before you sign that agreement. So that all takes place before signing. Um, once that agreement's signed, there's a very unique opportunity for us to um, introduce some potentially some automation to help increase efficiency within your organization. So after signing, and back to my example about, you know, maybe you are a, um, a candidate or applying for a job, uh, let's say mm -hmm. um, you sign a, a, an NDA or you're presented an NDA, 
that contract is then signed. And then after that, we could kick off an automated process where that NDA is then stored in a repository. Um, we could also kick off some sort of automated process where that document as well as your resume is routed to a recruited for them to then schedule mm -hmm. an interview. So there's some unique opportunities there where we can really in introduce some, some operational efficiencies. Um, and then again, some additional context here, 76% of all successful transactions on DocuSign's platform are completed within less than 24 hours. 41% are completed within 15 minutes. And That's what good. I'm also very excited about is our environmental impact. Mm -hmm. So as a result of utilizing DocuSign, um, there's been 93 billion sheets of paper saved, 10 wow. million trees saved, and over 9 billion gallons of water saved as well. That's incredible. Um, I wonder if, um, you know, you're, you're, you speak about like all of these efficiencies, um, but I know that there are a lot of concerns uh, about um, security, uh, data privacy and compliance, right? So I'm wondering if you could speak to um, these critical security and data privacy concerns in regards to the public sector, sector and how uh, DocuSign ensures that those your solution meets the stringent compliance and security uh, requirements of public agencies. Yeah, that's very important. So as I mentioned, we are both FedRAMP and state ramp authorized. We're trusted in every one of the 50 US states. Um, there's also a total of 15 federal executive departments, and we are trusted by all 15 within the U.S., and that mm -hmm. includes the Department of Justice as well as the Department of Defense. And a result of that is us, us being able to enable our customers to, for one, maintain a gold standard of security, prioritize compliance, and as well mitigate their risk. Um, could you share any stories uh, specifically, or case studies, I should say, uh, where public sector entities have successfully imp implemented the DocuSign technology. Um, and if you have any outcomes you'd like to share or highlight, that would be um, awesome to, to hear about as well. Yeah, love to. So one of many examples is how DocuSign works with health and human service agencies, specifically with child welfare agencies. Mm -hmm. um, child welfare agencies are gonna be managing processes related to child abuse cases and child support protection orders or, or child support uh, orders protection orders, and then the care of children, as well as foster care um, and adoption arrangements. So uh, as you can imagine, within those uh, use cases, there's going to be an agreement uh, that takes that's going to take place. There's going to be some sort of agreement workflow, and that's where DocuSign comes into play. Mm -hmm. So DocuSign supports child welfare agencies in case management, release of information forms, adoption, and foster care applications as well. And then some examples that I can share with customers that we're working with right now um, is our work with the Mississippi Department of Child Protective Services, who saw a 55% increase in foster families licensed as a result mm -hmm. of utilizing DocuSign for the last two years. In addition to that, the Indiana Department of Child Services were able to recover 50% of funding that was really just tied up in eligibility determination, determinations taking too long. Um, additionally, they saw a $3 million opportunity cost savings from the time saved, as well as a significant decrease in staff turnover. Um, that is, uh, that's, those are incredible numbers. Um, and yeah. I know that, you know, onboarding to get, um, to get these agencies uh, prepared to utilize DocuSign probably takes some, some um, significant yeah. training. And I do know that you guys offer a course called Get Started with DocuSign, and it's recommended for all public agencies to, to take that course. But how else does DocuSign support organizations in training their staff to implement your tools effectively? Yeah, so right off the bat, most public sector customers are going to have access to a dedicated account executive. In mm -hmm. addition to that, they're going to have access to our customer success team, specifically our customer success managers. Um, and, and, and these these customer success managers are, are super helpful. Um, in addition to that, though, they also have access to DocuSign University, where we have a plethora of mm -hmm. self-service tools that they can leverage um, if they're looking for any support uh, and resources as they're getting started in their DocuSign journey to help digitize their their, their business processes, they have access to self-service tools within that. But I really wanna drive home the, the, uh, the help that our customer success team is able to provide. So this team is able to provide product knowledge um, and what I think is really important, industry expertise. Mm -hmm. So we imagine with, with, with public sector entities, it's imperative that you're speaking to someone that essentially kind of speaks your language within your industry. And you're gonna have access to industry expertise uh, within our customer success team. As well, which is also equally important, change management. Um, we understand that, you know, 
no matter where you are in, in, in your, your organization, digital transformation, um, there's going to be some obstacles. It's, it's, it's cumbersome endeavor to, to take on. And so we have um, industry experts as well as um, members of our CSM team that are able to help you with, with the change management and getting over some of those obstacles, obstacles as you uh, optimize the way you're coming to agreement. Um, I know that you guys are very thoughtful about um, all of the needs of your government customers, um, and it sounds like you've you've covered a lot of challenges and, and offered solutions to a lot of the things that they deal with. But um, for those uh, public sector customers, are there any upcoming features or innovations uh, in the DocuSign pop, uh, pipeline that the public sector clients should be excited to know about or hear about? Yeah, so we're really excited. Um... Just about a month ago, we had our, our one of our largest customer events, and this is our momentum event, and we mm -hmm. announced DocuSign IM. So it's our intelligent agreement management platform. This is huge for us. Um, we launched this with an entire suite of applications to really help lead the category. So this is an mm -hmm. entirely new SaaS category for us. And DocuSign IM is going to help organizations seamlessly connect their different components and agreement management processes in a unified place. Um, so if you think of um, really speeding up the way folks are, are collaborating and automating the processes of how they're coming to agreement, you'll be able to do this utilizing DocuSign IAM. So processes and systems um, mm -hmm. that you're leveraging for your CRM, HCM, and ERP, you're going to be able to integrate DocuSign, I, DocuSign IAM within those. I love that you guys are embracing kind of this AI trend that's making everyone's lives so much more efficient. Um, and I would like to hear um, a little bit more if there are um, if there's any advice that you have to give to public sector leaders who are really considering adopting um, your e-signature tool and, and digital agreement technology, what are the first steps that they should take um, when implementing um, implementing a DocuSign into their, their processes? Yeah, so everyone's digital transformation journey is going to be different. Mm -hmm. My advice is to take a look at where your organization is at the highest level um, and then really work incrementally from there. Uh, first mm -hmm. step is going to be the digitization of forms and automation of related processes. Second is going to be creating a repository or like a single source of truth mm -hmm. where you're able to securely access um, any contracts or information um, across your organization. So, so all stakeholders mm -hmm. involved are going to be able to collaborate and access that information from that repository securely. Um, third is going to be incorporating or overlaying some sort of analytics or AI in order to draw mm -hmm. actionable insights from this aggregated data that sits within your repository. Uh, you know, I love it. The, the three steps that you outlined and highlighted here um, not only help them onboard your solution, but really kind of lay the groundwork for, um, for government agencies to implement some of our startup GovTech uh, solutions as well. So, um, you, you know, it's really important to highlight that governments taking any of these steps are just going to be a great, a great way for them to kind of um, transition into like a digital, uh, a digital environment. So I really appreciate you bringing those, lifting those steps up um, today. Yeah. Um, but to speak to that, so how does DocuSign, how do those solution, your solution, excuse me, help public sector agencies enhance their engagement with citizens? Do you have any <laughs> examples of how your tools have made services more accessible to the public? Yeah, so one customer example I can share is with the uh, Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Mm -hmm. um, so they started their DocuSign journey specifically in their special education department. Um, and at that time, over 30% of their students were on what they called individual education plans. And so mm -hmm. these are tailored and designed plans to help their special needs students succeed academically um, and socially at school and beyond. Um, before DocuSign came into play, historically teachers and administrators and parents would essentially come together in person to work on these IEPs. Um, mm -hmm. So they'd have to review them, make any sort of updates or changes and sign off on them. Um, and it was really just a paper bound, manually intensive process for them. Um, during COVID and when in-person learning was no longer available, um, they introduced DocuSign to really streamline mm -hmm. the way that these IEPs um, you know, were handled. So we really streamlined their workflow there. And so this gave parents, teachers, and administrators the ability to um, go to a centralized location to mm -hmm. make any sort of reviews or updates or changes to those documents and, and do it from virtually anywhere. That's that's incredible. I do. Um, I come from an, uh, the education sector as well as my husband, and I do remember that. Um, so I appreciate that you guys yeah. stepped up and helped really streamline yeah. that process. Um, I worked in the middle school at the time, and it was um, it's amazing how much paperwork there really yeah. is when you're yeah. educating our young people. Um, yeah. 
Um, so to kind of pivot a little bit, um, can you talk about the, you know, I know we have a great partnership here between CivStart and DocuSign, and it, we've had one for a couple of years. Um, and I'm wondering if there are specific areas that, or projects where you see our collaboration expanding. Um, I know, but I would love for you to share it with, uh, with the audience today. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to. Uh, so as I mentioned, DocuSign uh, intelligent Agreement Management is, is huge for us. Um, we're really excited about it. Uh, we just recently announced it. And I really do think there's a unique opportunity for these uh, CivStart um, cohorts to expand mm -hmm. on the use cases that exist within DocuSign IAM. So any one of you that are a SaaS solution providing some sort of innovative solution to, to the public sector, I think there's a unique opportunity for you to incorporate DocuSign IAM within your platform and your solution. And not just for internal use cases, but also external. Um, we really want to continue to support mm -hmm. our budget conscious startups uh, and help them integrate DocuSign and integrate DocuSign again within their internal workflows as well as external. And so potentially providing solutions that offer DocuSign and a seamless embedded experience for your end users as a result. And so kind of to piggyback on that and the um, kind of creating that seamless um, seamless use for, for public sector agencies, how does DocuSign integrate with existing public sector IT infrastructures and systems, particularly any of the common platforms used in government operations? Yeah, so we have over 400 pre-built integrations and award-winning APIs. So it's really easy for our government customers to leverage them. Um, mm -hmm. you're able to take any sort of like your, your legacy platforms or systems of records and leverage DocuSign across them. So if you think of any sort of like your, your ubiquitous platforms that already exist within your organization, if you're leveraging applications like Microsoft, Salesforce, mm -hmm. Google, Workday, um, you're able to integrate DocuSign within them. Um, and we have over 400 APIs and that number is growing every single day. That's, wow. It's literally what I do for my job <laughs> is help grow that number. Um, you know. You mentioned the 400 APIs, which already exist, and I would love to hear about ways, because um, I'm sure some of those um, include um, ways that your solution is accessible to all users, including some with disabilities or even limited technical skills. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So this is a matter we don't take lightly. Um, we know, yeah. according to the World Health Organization, that there's close to 2.2 billion people that are either blind or visually impaired. And we consider this when we're making any sort of accessibility updates to our solution, because we really want to empower them and make sure that they feel safe and secure when they're signing mm -hmm. legal documents with DocuSign. So when we're making updates to our technology for um, um, uh, any sort of assistive or adaptive technologies, we, we keep that in mind. Uh, we want really want to make sure that they feel comfortable transacting um, with DocuSign online. And so some of the updates that we've made recently is enhanced keyboard navigation and controls, as well mm -hmm. as expanded compatibility with screen readers and browsers. So you offer all of these really cool features. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about the scalability of your DocuSign solution? Because it sounds like you have an extensive reach and I'm curious to hear um, how you've accomplished that. Yeah, the breadth and depth is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned it before, <laughs> we serve over a million customers um, and we have over a billion users worldwide and we're in over 180 uh, countries. And so that's gonna span across industries and sectors. So if you think of, you know, from your smallest of country or county agencies to the largest of federal departments, DocuSign is there, as well as from your smallest of startups to the largest of Fortune 500 companies, DocuSign is there and we're trusted. So you have really nothing to worry about in that regard. Which is, you know, amazing because we have um, startups in our accelerator who, um, you know, who work with really small uh, communities and governments at the local level, to state level, and even some um, who aspire to, you know, to have a uh, federal agencies as their as their customers. So it's really great to hear that your solution um, could provide a seamless experience for our startups working with their um, their government customers at any level, uh, which is really awesome. Um, but kind of to speak to that, uh, because you are across the board and you know all three levels of government, can you speak to um, the challenges that you typically see when uh, when those users adopt or, or, or when can you speak to user adoption in the public sector among those organizations when they implement new technologies? And, and you know, how does DocuSign assist them um, in overcoming those challenges so that they can really truly provide that seamless experience that you mentioned? Yeah, so right off the bat, as I mentioned before, DocuSign University, I feel is a great self-service tool. Um, mm -hmm. When you're getting started with utilizing DocuSign products and services, I really do feel like that's a, a great resource. Also, as I mentioned, our, our customer success team uh, is great to leverage as well. Um, we mean it when we say we really encourage that crawl, walk, run approach. 
Um, mm -hmm. Specifically in the public sector, we understand that trying to transform the way you come to agreement and digitizing these these very paper intensive manual business processes is difficult. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a cumbersome endeavor for you, and we want to be patient and, and, and help you along the way. Um, so we have these resources in place mm -hmm. to support our customers as they're progressing through this journey to optimize the way they're coming to agreement. Um, did you have anything? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no. no. I just, yeah. no, okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, that just makes me think. So I, I used to run a nonprofit that was completely publicly funded. And one of the ways I could get city council to approve me spending money was to show them ahead of time um, the benefit and the ROI that, that would um, come from that investment. And so do you have any insights um, into the cost savings that public sector agencies can expect from adop adopting DocuSign technologies? And are there any uh, metrics or ROI figures available from your current users that you have seen um, be successful, uh, a successful pitch as you're trying to get other um, government entities to, to adopt your technology? Completely understand. Yeah, just to find that expenditure <laughs> is important. Yeah. We, we definitely want to do our best to, to help do that. Um, so we have our, our DocuSign's value consulting team, and mm -hmm. they are dedicated to providing, you know, value case studies and the value out of utilizing DocuSign, um, customer highlights to, to, to really showcase the, the return on investment achieved by implementing DocuSign. And so some of the customers that I can share and in, in, in some of the, uh, the RI that they experienced as a result of utilizing DocuSign is as follows. So the, the Oregon Health Authority, they saw a 93% mm -hmm. faster cycle time uh, for new contracts as a result of utilizing wow. DocuSign. Um, the California Natural Resources Agency and the Department of Water Resources saw a 75% reduction in hard paper costs. And then the Louisiana Board of Pardons and Committee on Parole saw an 80% reduction in staff needed to keep up with their high volume workloads. That's it. Those numbers are incredible and um, statistically extremely significant. I mean, that, yeah. that's astronomical. Yeah. Um, and so I'm wondering, and we kind of mentioned this before, um, you know, security is always a huge issue and the, the entities and organizations you just mentioned um, are dealing with really confidential and sensitive information. And so uh, can you speak a little bit more? I know you did at the top of the hour, but yeah. what security features do, does DocuSign offer to address those unique needs of the public sector? I and mean, how do those features compare to other industry standards? I know this is also top of mind for our startups as well, um, because some of them are handling the same kind of sensitive information. Yeah, security matters. So I, I completely understand. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. Not to sound like a broken record, but again, we are both <laughs> Fed ramp and state ramp compliant. Mm -hmm. um, I mean it when I say it, security is the first of our uh, first top of mind for us. Um, and it was like that from the inception of DocuSign. So from the very mm -hmm. beginning. Um, and so we have a dedicated trust center just for that. Um, we give our customers access to the latest in DocuSign security, compliance, legal, and privacy, as well as system performance information. Um, again, we really want to make sure that you feel comfortable transacting business online, uh, leveraging DocuSign. And so we have that trust center in place for that. I know that you you speak about the trust center, but I'm wondering how else DocuSign stays abreast of changes um, to the laws and regulations affecting digital signatures um, and documentation in the public sector. Um, and how do you communicate those changes with your clients? Because I know you know government um, staffers are are stretched and aren't always aware of, of all of the changes that are coming um, to laws and compliance regulations. So how do you all um, manage that and communicate that with your public sector? Um, agencies that you interact with? Yeah, so we have a dedicated government affairs team that works oh, cool. with government mm -hmm. and policy advocates around the globe. And so this team is tasked with staying informed about any sort of laws and regulations across the globe and any sort of changes that might happen as mm -hmm. well. Um, so they advocate for government modernization across all levels of government, including on the state and local level and the federal level. Um, and they work closely with our public sector team to make sure that they stay informed on any changes um, to legislation or bills that may matter to us, our business and customers. No, that's that's awesome because I know it's hard to it's hard to um, keep your thumb on the pulse of all those changes. Yeah. So it's really great to hear that you guys have a team of experts dedicated to that. And I'm, um, you know, I wasn't aware that uh, I know you guys take security really uh, seriously and compliance seriously, but uh, that just kind of drives it home how much you really do um, invest in, in those important uh, features of your of your product that you offer. So um, I'm wondering though, so you, you know, you uh, you tell them about changes that are happening, um, you know, to compliance and stuff. You make sure that you stay on top of all of that. Um, but then, how do you gather feedback from your public sector clients about 
um, ways that you guys can be continuously improving the products and services that you provide to them because there are other um, challenges that that come up uh, that aren't necessarily related to compliance issues and regulatory issues. So how all do you manage that? Yeah, so at our uh, most recent customer event, Momentum, we launched DocuSign Community, which we're really excited mm -hmm. about. And this is an, innov an innovative platform designed to connect our users with resources that they can uh, leverage to support them um, as they're getting started with DocuSign products and services. So whether you're looking for any sort of like tips or tricks or troubleshooting mm -hmm. advice, there's effectively a community that you can access and leverage to, to, to get answers to those questions. Um, some features that we're really excited about is the discussion forums, our community lounge, group pages, as well as our virtual events. And then in addition to that, we have an internal program that we call our voice of customer, which I think is amazing. Um, and, and here we catalog and um, record like any sort of customer feedback that we get in regards to any mm -hmm. sort of like feature request or, or functionality that they wanna see uh, incorporated in the product. And that really informs our product team um, and, and their product roadmap as a result. That's awesome. So, uh, probably why you guys have been around for two decades, because yeah. you guys are really listening to customers and what they need. Um, and so I, I really appreciate that we've spent you know, a good half hour talking about how DocuSign has really set itself up to be um, a wonderful tool for, um, for public sector agencies to utilize. And I would love to pivot a little bit now um, mm -hmm. in our discussion to talk about how you guys collaborate with other tech providers, um, specifically any startups that we have on, on this call today, because I'm sure they're interested and, and learning how um, they can integrate your solution so that they are also providing a seamless experience for their public sector uh, entity. So what other um, collaborations or other technology providers um, offer comprehensive solutions to the public sector agencies that you work with? Do you have any examples that you can provide, um, any examples of those collaborations that you can provide for us? Yeah, we're really partnering at every level and I can kind of break it up in three categories. So we have our strategic alliances. So if you think of like mm -hmm. the Salesforce, for example, we have a longstanding relationship with Salesforce. Um, they're one of our earliest customers and partners and we have uh, over 10,000 joint customers with them. We also have our relationship with Microsoft where our solution mm -hmm. is available on the Azure marketplace um, and as well as SAP. So uh, DocuSign solutions are integrated and accessible from within SAP products. So such as SAP ERP, their customer experience product, as well as success factors. Success factors. Um, then we also have growth partners that I work with. Um, mm -hmm. So some examples of those is um, Submittable, which is a grant uh, origination and submission solution. And then Velatura, which is a health information exchange solution. And again, both of those are, are integrating DocuSign um, into their agreement workflow. And then uh, lastly, we have the startups. So Civstart, mm -hmm. of course, which we're really excited about. Um, really excited about potentially embedding DocuSign functionality um, into some of the innovative solutions that your cohort of startups is, are, are building. Um, in addition to that, we have our ISV PayGo program. Mm -hmm. um, and within this program, we make it super easy for SaaS companies to embed DocuSign e-signature into their solution. Um, and we do this at a really flat, uh, low rate with no upfront cost whatsoever for the customers. And so this really gives them the ability to embed DocuSign functionality into their solution and then offer a seamless embedded experience to their end customers. That is, um, that's a beautiful segue uh, into um, kind of talking more with the, the folks on the call who are startups. And I would love now um, to open up the floor for a Q&A session. I should have mentioned at the top of the hour that um, we were gonna allot for, for Q&A from the audience um, towards the end of the call. Um, but I also, and I'm going to spotlight here, um, we are joined by MJ Jackson, who is, um, let's see here. Blood. Sorry guys, I should make this a spotlight. All right, one second, I can figure out how to do this. Sorry, I, I should have practiced this. Remove spotlight of me and add replace spotlight. There we go. Hey, MJ. MJ awesome. is the VP of Global Head of Industries at DocuSign. He and Fickison uh, work together. And, um, you know, we are delighted for you to join us. Um, so, you know, if anyone has any really big questions, Fickison and I can tackle them. But MJ is the expert who's also here to help with that. So thank you for joining us today. No, it's my pleasure. I've, I've enjoyed listening in. Uh, both of you guys have have answered so many questions already. I don't know if there's <laughs> much that I could add. I mean, it was this is a great conversation. So I'm, well, there's I'm, one in the chat, and I would love it's from Harold, and I would love to kind of lift it up as to, as to start this um, this portion of our call today. He's interested in knowing if there is a specific subscription to obtain the Fed Ramp and State Ramp features that you guys um, you guys now have. 
No, that's a that's a great question. Thank you, Harold, for that. So I wouldn't call it a subscription. There is a, a separate what we call a SKU, right? It, it is a, a separate product offering. And so if you subscribe to our state ramp or fed ramp authorized products, you uh, get you do that with the understanding that your data will be physically and or logically separated from the data of our other customers in a in either a logical or a physical uh, separation. We do have a number of different categories. So there's what we call the Fed SKU, there's the Fed Ramp SKU, and then there's the commercial. So with Fed, that's typically reserved for our customers in the intelligence community or DOD. That is a physical separation. Um, and then with Fed Ramp, there's a logical separation, and then there's the commercial. But even as Fickerson said earlier, even with the commercial level, there are a number of safeguards in place to help ensure uh, security and, and ensure that we continue to earn your trust. No, thank you for answering that question. I appreciate it. Um, I I was impressed to know that you had FedRAMP and then that you uh, recently to learn about StateRAMP because as we had talked about a couple times um, earlier, Fickison and I, um, data security is so important, especially you know when it, we're talking about public sector agencies. So um, thank you for, for elaborating on that. Um, is there anyone else on the call today who, uh, who has any questions for our DocuSign experts here? Yeah, Jeff, please uh, take yourself off mute. You are welcome to have the floor. Hi, um, thanks, for, thanks for doing this. I'm, I'm sorry, I came in a little late. I, I, right. The registration process caused me late, so I may have missed some stuff. I do okay. work, with, I work with local governments. Mm -hmm. um, and and they, you know, we actually wanted to implement a DocuSign solution. But, and again, I don't know if this, this was covered or will be covered or if I'm being if this is redundant, so I apologize to anybody if I, if you guys are talking to this right. Um, the local governments we worked with, we wound up having to use at that time Panadoc instead of you guys. Much would have, would have much preferred you, but there was a requirement of minimal amount of envelopes that had to be purchased. Is that still something that you guys are on? Because and that that's unfortunately very prohibitive yeah. when we're doing it with local governments that are only doing 200 or 300. I'd much prefer, I, yeah. I don't know if your technology is better, but your brand is better. So I'd much prefer to say I'm working with you guys in Panda. But yeah. it was actually unbelievably frustrating at the time. And yeah. um, I'm hoping that you, and then the, the other things have come up since then, HIPAA, FERPA, all the other kind of stuff, didn't even talk to you guys because of the envelope requirements. I'm just, you know, if I were making money on this, it'd be great, but it's a pass through. And that time yeah. I was extremely frustrated. So if you could talk about that, I'd love to hear more. I, I, I'd be very interested actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, completely understand. So uh, I, I mentioned our ISV PAYGO program. Um, that program is in place essentially for your use case right there. We have no upfront costs what's, whatsoever. It's, it's, it's literally just pay as you go. There's no upfront um, envelope commitment or anything. Um, you sign up, enter a credit card, and you're only paying for the envelopes that you use. So this will allow you to embed DocuSign functionality within your, your solution, offer it to your end customers, and, and, and really only pay for the envelopes that they consume. Okay. Um, another question is, some of the other, I mean, now I've gotten more educated in the last three, four years about this. Some other providers have, have a situation where if we use them, you know, there is a, there is a program where, you know, you're, you're, you're charging, let's say $2 an envelope, but we're, we're only getting charged, you know, $1.80. So we're making mm -hmm. a little bit of money on that. Is that yeah. something that, that exists in that realm also? Yeah, so that, that is within the ISV pay growth. So the, the, the flat rate fee is just $1.50 per envelope. Um, so how you choose to to repackage and price that solution in market is completely up to you. But there's there's definitely opportunity for you to uh, profit off in some of the margins there. And and HIPAA and FERPA, HIPAA, HIPAA compliant. Um, FERPA, are those different and, deals? I'm saying are HIPAA and FERPA the same as what you just described, or is that a different bucket? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, did, did 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 you guys put something in the chat about you know how I could access this or is this something you can some information? I'd be I'd be happy to put that link in the uh, in the chat for you, for you to take a look at. Yeah. yeah and, and Jeff, I'll just add you you started your question by saying you know you weren't sure if our product was better, but you know that our brand is stronger, and so it is. I I, I don't even care if it's better. I want your brand. <laughs> I know, but we 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 care. We yeah. Care. So we, we love to talk to you offline. Uh, I love that. 
Yeah, I can talk to you in short here in this public forum about at the highest level why we are better. I mean, Fickerson did an amazing job of explaining throughout the part find the best partnering model, whether it's you know embedding DocuSign or there's a referral model, there's a go to market, sell to, sell through, whatever the model, like we have a plethora of options for the partner, but then also for your customer, we want to ensure that we're providing the best joint services and solutions to your end customer as well, which are the government agencies. And so for a number of reasons, uh, not only is our product better, uh, long, longest on the market and uh, being the leader by Gartner and Forrester and others for a reason, but we want to make sure that your experience as a partner of DocuSign is just as stellar. And so we'd be happy to walk you through. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you guys offline. I, I, I'd welcome that a lot. Uh, again, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the local scene. You know, I work with local governments, so they're, they're some of them will be happy to for for anything as opposed to what they have right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. and Jeff, I, I put that link in the uh, in the chat, so you can go ahead if you hit inquire now under the the, the Pago tab, you'll be able to uh, start the process, and we'll reach out. Okay. Um, again, uh, uh, forgive me for being late to the party. I, I really was trying to get in on time. So I had to do a lot of registration, but um, is it is this this takes me into a situation where I can talk to an account executive or talk to one of you guys or how, how does that, how does that plan? Yeah. You, you, you would work with me um, as well as an account executive. Okay. I, I'd like that a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to answer my, my uh, concern and question. Of course. No problem. It's all right. Just jump in really quick there, Jeff. This is Anthony Jameson from SIF Start. Hey everyone. I just wanted to jump in really quick. Um, you can catch the beginning of this uh, this uh, uh, session. It's recorded, so you'll have access to watch it from the beginning. Super. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. I appreciate you. I'm pointing that out because I wouldn't have thought to do it. <laughs> so there are a couple more questions in the chat. If I could raise up the first one um, from Yadira Ferrer. She's with Simple Proof and, and she's asked, she says, Simple Proof um, at their, her startup focuses on blockchain timestamping. And she was wondering how they could integrate with DocuSign to offer the alternative of using their timestamping services to customers who use DocuSign. So I'm sorry, what was her name? of the person asking the question? Yadira. Yadira. Yeah. All right, so Yadira, thank you for your question. Um, I would love to talk to you along with one of our solutions consultants offline. At the, at the highest level, we offer what's called a certificate of completion. And so what that does is it puts to ease any concerns that you as our partner or your customers, the, the state and local agencies or the constituents that they serve uh, it puts to ease any concerns they may have about the manipulation of the agreement or the form or the data um, at the time of interaction or after. And so what I mean by that is after every DocuSign envelope is signed and returned, a certificate of completion is completed and potentially presented if you would like that incorporated into your workflow. That certificate of completion will show the time that the envelope was received, the time that it was opened, the time that it was signed. Potentially, we could include the IP address from which it was signed. And so I think this will align nicely with the level of confidence that you're looking to instill when you talk about you know, blockchain and immutable records. They're not you know, interchangeably, obviously, but it, we, we do have a number of process, processes in place uh, incorporated into our product that will, I think, avert any any concerns. So we'd, we'd love to talk to you offline about that. Thank you, MJ, for answer, uh, answering that question. I appreciate it. Um, there's one more in the chat, if I could um, could ask of you guys. Um, this one is from Harold, um, and he says that, you know, they mostly use DocuSign um, for signature processing, but is curious if there are other cases the governments um, use DocuSign for other than that signature processing function. Yes. So Ferguson mentioned earlier, uh, CLM is also FedRAMP moderate authorized or FedRAMP authorized at the moderate level. Uh, CLM stands for contract lifecycle management. And the best way I like to describe this is uh, the difference between what we call a negotiated form and a non-negotiated form. So Ferguson accurately described how at least 75% of business processes within a government agency are going to begin with some sort of a form. 
Now, forms like applications, whether you're trying to determine eligibility or kick off your enrollment process, those forms are simply fields that you either manually input data or input it from external service, external systems, and then you sign it, right? Though the form itself is not negotiated. You're entering data, you sign it, and then once it's received, it's either approved or denied, or maybe you ask, they ask for additional information, but the, the form itself is not negotiated. When you have a negotiated contract or form or an agreement, that's when you may be negotiating with a vendor or some sort of a MSA, right? That's where you have red lines and edits and you have back and forth, potentially multiple collaborators and approvers. That's when CLM is, is required or, or comes into play, right? So it's for negotiated agreements. And again, throughout the entire process, CLM will provide that single source of truth, the repository that Fickerson uh, mentioned, as well as allowing for secure access of each of the stakeholders based on rule related, um, I'm sorry, role related rules or other uh, specifications that you set up when you when you implement the solution. But again, it's both state ramp and Fed ramp approved in addition to e-signature. And Harold actually had a follow-up question um, about uh, the Fed ramp compliancy. So he's asking if um, is DocuSign's Fed ramp compliancy due to storing files on an isolated isolated storage, or are there other levels of encryption or another set of features applied? That's a great question. Um, so the separation, whether physical or logical, is a key component, but there is a list of other qualifications that products and services and, and vendors need to satisfy and adhere to in order to attain and maintain uh, FedRAMP certification. And we we can provide that list, uh, but it's it's a pretty stringent list, which is why most of our, uh, I hate to use the word competitors in the space, but many other products in, in this uh, segment are not uh, FedRAMP authorized. Yeah, and I just added um, our uh, a link to a, a document on our website on our, our FedRAMP authorization as well. And I think that'll go into detail about how we've achieved it. FedRAMP right. authorization. Thank you so much, Vicks. Yeah, thank you, Vickerson and, and MJ for, for answering that. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, so I want to um, to just check with the audience. Are there any other questions anyone has um, for our DocuSign experts before um, they leave us with their final thoughts? Well, MJ and Fikasin, mm -hmm. they've both left their, um, their emails uh, in the chat for you guys to follow up. You're also welcome to reach out to me um, or anyone else on the Sibstart team, so I will also provide um, provide our contact information um, in the, the chat as well. But I would like MJ Fickison, um to give you guys both some time to, to leave us with any, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Tony. Can I add, add something? Um, yeah, This please. is great because um, I've had conversations with a handful of our startups over the past week and I was trying to figure out like who, I'm glad I listened to what you guys were yeah. saying here because I already know like, off top of my head, there's like five startups I, in our program that I spoke to in the past week that oh, needed to be here, awesome. right? That I need awesome. to connect you guys with, right? Awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to make those, I'm going to facilitate that for you because um, you're exactly what they're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, um, I, 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 I didn't know what to expect and I love this content. So we definitely will be pushing it out to um, the, more of these startups because uh, I think a lot of them would be able to tap into this. Thank you so much, Anthony. We appreciate that. And I think Jessica and I had talked about, you know, it's great that we have this recorded. You know, every every green content is, mm -hmm. is awesome to go ahead and circulate, but we'll likely do some more of these webinars in the near future as well. Uh, really Absolutely. want to grow the audience. So yeah, any any feedback you could provide is going to be welcome and appreciated. Perfect. Thank you. And Tony, I don't know if you heard, but there were a couple startups that did reach out that ended up scheduling some demos. And um, you know how they hustle. They were like, sorry, I really want to yeah, be no, here. <laughs> demos take priority. So, I'm, really um, I'm really mad. I'm really mad that uh, that uh, our guys at um, Civic Bell weren't here. This would have been perfect for them. But anyway. Yeah. Um, we'll connect yeah. you guys. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, with that, um, if there are no more questions, I really, MJ and Ficuson were so um Lucky to have your expertise here. What final thoughts would you like to leave the group? Um, I'll I'll go first, and then I'll I'll uh, let Fickerson leave leave the final final thought because he's done such a great job with, with right. 
over the past hour. Um, I would say, keeping in mind, too, I was looking at some of the attendees who are on today, and I realized we've got a combination of gov tech startups as well as government leaders. And so I'll frame it, I'll frame it this way. Um, sorry, as my as my background uh, starts to ring. <laughs> can you can you guys hear that? No, we're all good. Okay, good. So I'll 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 put it this way. It, it usually comes down to experience. And there are three elements to the experience that we at DocuSign try to focus on and keep top of mind when we're working with our partners as well as uh, our joint customers and the customers, in this case, constituents of our joint customers. The first aspect is engagement, right? And that's the front using or the front facing element, uh, the, the part where the rubber meets the road or the, or the finger taps the screen. Uh, we want to ensure that the engagement is intuitive, uh, it's seamless, and it just it just works, regardless of the device, regardless of the location of the end user. And Figuston did a great job of talking about accessibility and our commitment to it. So regardless of who you are or where you are, we want to ensure that that engagement is top of mind. Uh, the second piece is what I call efficiency. And that really speaks to the value proposition for the agencies who are listening in, right? Whether it's streamlining processes or automating workflows, uh, reducing the amount of manual data entry that takes place. It's really about you know, optimizing efficiencies and, and getting work done faster so that our end result, the product is just as functional as it is beautiful and intuitive. And then finally, the third piece, I think is relevant to both subsets of our audience and that's effectiveness, right? Measuring how effective you are at the first two pieces. So you wanna be able to quantify the value that you're delivering if you are a startup. You wanna be able to talk in real numbers and make sure that the government leaders that you're pitching to don't have to mentally connect the dots between what it is you offer and what it is they need. And then for the government agencies, I mentioned earlier, I don't like to use the word competitor when referring to other companies out there. And the reason for that is because I find that more times than not, our competition is business as usual. It's just the status quo because you guys are trying to do more with less, you're spread thin and you've got competing priorities for your finite budget. And so what I try to instill is to say, you know, let's put a number on the status quo. Let's quantify the cost of doing nothing because the cost of doing nothing is not nothing. And if we can quantify it, put a dollar amount to it, it it's a way to um, identify where the metrics will lie to ensure the ROI that you set out to, to realize. So that's my, my parting word. Uh, the cost of doing nothing is not nothing. And let's continue to focus on the experience. Engagement up front, efficiency in the back, and measuring effectiveness throughout. Those are really awesome. great words of wisdom, and I appreciate it. Yeah, that's um, a that's a that's a tough follow up for me. Um, <laughs> but go for it. You can do it. Yeah, no, no, I got it. No, I'm not worried about it. Um, yeah, to, to Angie's point, let 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 let's do something together. I think we we have like a really unique opportunity with these Cisco cohorts. Um, I have been working with ISV Embed partners, specifically within the ISV uh, Embed program at DocuSign for a few years now. And um, with the advent of our ISV PAYGO program, I, I really feel like it's unlocked um, like a whole new category of, of opportunities for us here. Um, we understand that, you know, you are, you are, you, you, some startups are, are cash strapped, very budget conscious. And um, I, I really feel like it is a unique opportunity for you to get out there in market with this integrate, integrated DocuSign um, solution, leverage our name brand um, and offer a seamless experience to your customers. So um, we're really eager and excited to work with uh, as many of you as possible. Um, our emails are here in the chat. Please feel free to reach out to me. Do not hesitate at all. If there's any questions that I can answer, um, I'll lean on my team and specifically any of our technical resources to support you as well um, as you're building out these integrations. Thank you, Ficuson and MJ both. Um, I, if I could just leave some, some final thoughts. I know that a lot of us get into this and we talked about it at the beginning for sustainability purposes and really so that our, um, our government agencies can offer the best um, experience for its residents. And, and you guys are playing an instrumental part in that. And um, I really am glad that we were able to highlight that today. 
um, and really excited about um, the partnership moving forward and what all you can do for our startups. So um, I really appreciate you guys being here today and um, be on the lookout. This recording, as Tony mentioned earlier, will be available and um, it'll probably be available first thing in the morning. I'm going to um, going to send it out to you all by email. So if there's anyone who wasn't able to join um, but could benefit from, from hearing this session, please feel free to forward it on to your colleagues and, and other partners in, in this um, ecosystem. So thank you again for joining us today. And um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, all. Bye. Appreciate Thanks so it. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.